Okay, uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, today, uh, first session, we are going to have first session. Uh, the <coughs> guest speaker name, already I told you, he's my classmate, good friend of mine, Dr. D. Prabhagaran. Uh, currently, he's working as a vice president, uh, clinical research, uh, in vitro clinical research organization, Bangalore. Okay, he's a masterpiece of uh, pharmaceutics. He completed his B farm along with me, Erod College of Pharmacy, Erod, in the year 1998. Uh, he, after that, he got a uh, gate. He uh, went to Madhya Pradesh Shagar University, pursuing his uh, M farm. There itself, he completed his uh, PhD. Uh, uh, he has a vast experience of 25 years uh, in pharmaceutical industry. Okay, he's a, a good orator also. Today he is going to, already I discussed with you people, today he is going to give a topic on leachables and extractables. If you have any doubt regarding leachable and extractables, please post your questions to sir. Okay, na? Prabhakar, yeah. hand over to you. Hi. Please carry on. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction, Dr. Dinesh. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Dr. Dinesh Mohan and the principal of uh, uh, Viper. Uh, for giving this opportunity to interact with you through this platform. Uh, so uh, let us start the presentation. I will share my screen with you people so that uh, you confirm me whether you are able to see the presentation first. So you are able to see this uh, presentation. Uh, Dr. Dinesh, are you able to see this presentation? Yes, yes, we can okay. able to see your yeah, yeah. So you can hear my voice also, just to, to confirm. Please. What? Yeah, yeah. So this is the PPT? Okay. First one is okay, Prabhupada. This is not uh, is not at all uh, able to read. Okay. This one? Oh, it's okay. So, okay, I am unable to how to uh, make this one is bigger. I don't know how to do that. Uh, okay, okay. So, I think it should be uh, visible enough. Those who are sitting behind also, I don't, I'm not sure. But uh, technically, this is what maximum I can do, I can do right now. Okay. Okay. Can we start now? Yes, yes, yeah. we can. Just one minute. Yeah. Um, so uh, basically today we are going to talk about the extractable leachables in the pharmaceutical development. Uh, so. We have seen a uh, lot many things uh, during the pharmaceutical development like uh, the um, development of formulations, development of the active pharmaceutical ingredient first, then the development of the finished formulation. So active pharmaceutical ingredient is nothing but the active part of the formulation. That means, uh, for example, if you consider the paracetamol tablet, the paracetamol tablet is uh, maybe 750 mg 
or 800 mg tablet, but you will have paracetamol around 600 mg, 650 mg, and uh, others are excipients. So, so to make the tablet, you will use the excipients, and in that paracetamol is the active pharmaceutical ingredient. So you have the active pharmaceutical ingredient in the formulation. Then you have the excipients uh, in the also in the formulation to make the formulation uh, to make the tablet in, in uh, the inter, uh, uh, to make the finished product. You have to use the excipients. So same way, same way if you are making the suspension or anything else, you have the active pharmaceutical ingredient, then the excipients. So, so these are the two major part of the formulation. And once you make the formulation, then what is next? You have to make it into a uh, packaging system. That means you have to supply the products into the market. So to make that happen, if it is a tablet or capsule, you have to make into the bottles. You can fill into the bottles and give. Or if it is the blisters uh, or um, <laughs> something else. Uh, Adal, yeah, yeah. Slide, slide, uh, uh, the, you did not change the slide. Only yeah, yeah, I will only. do that. I will do that. So when okay. I am going to the topic, uh, second topic, I will do that. Yeah. So when you, okay. uh, this is the introduction I want. I am giving uh, before going to the main topic. Okay. So before going to the extract of eligibles, I am giving the background of the formulation development, and what are the components of formulation. So that's where we have seen the active pharmaceutical ingredient first, then the excipients first in the different kind of dosage form, whether it is a tablet, capsule, or a suspension, or a nasal spray, or a dermal uh, ointment or gel. So there is a API and the excipients. Now it becomes to when it goes to the market, then uh, you have to make it uh, more, uh, you have to make it uh, to supply uh, to the uh, different um, container closer systems or the packaging materials. So that may be, uh, uh, yeah, for example, yeah, solid dosage form like tablets, capsule, there may be a blister or something, or you you will have the suspend for the suspension and other things. You have the plastic bottles or the glass bottles or the injectables. You have the pre-filled syringe, or you can have these uh, vials and rubber stopper. Or if it is a large volume parenterals, you have the plastic bags or something like that. Then if it is a nasal spray or something, you have the actuator. And the bottle, it may be a plastic or the, there are a lot of components involved in this packaging system. So there are three major important uh, components in the formulations before it is reaching the market. That is the active pharmaceutical ingredient, then the excipients and the packaging systems. So this is very important to understand before we go to the extractable leachables. So this slide is talking about the development of pharmaceuticals brought the revolution to human health. That means, so we have seen last 50, 60 years, there has been a lot of discovery about the new drugs, biologicals, which is making a revolution in the human health. Those diseases which cannot be cured has been cured. Those diseases which is not able to treat, which is we are able to treat. So it is a huge revolution. But when a product comes into the market, uh, we need to uh, see that the product is very clear from the impurities from, uh, from the leachables are safe to consume. So that is very important. So we need to see that this is very important. The product is very free from any impurities and leachables and safe to consume. Give me one second, please. Sorry, to, I have to take this call. So sorry for the interruption. And so coming back to this topic where we have seen that this pharmaceutical should be free of any impurities and leachables and safe to consume. So what is impurities? Impurities are nothing but it can be coming from the active pharmaceutical ingredient or it is coming from the uh, that excipients. So both can the impurities can arise from either from the active pharmaceutical ingredient or from the excipients or by the interaction of the API as well as the excipients it can form. So this is this impurities can be detrimental for the formulation whether it can degrade the active pharmaceutical ingredient to the less potency or these impurities can be 
a toxic it can create the toxicity or adverse event to the patients those who are consuming the products so there are impurities and what are the other source of impurities is the packaging system so whatever packaging system what we are using also very critical for the formulation so we are using plastics we are using plastic bags we are using glass materials we are using rubber materials so all these form uh, materials which is used for the packaging systems can come into the contact of the formulation during the storage that means when you make the finished product and it is stored in the uh, for example the uh, plastic bottles or the glass bottles which is closed with the rubber stopper or if it is a uh, injectable formulation there will be a pre filled syringe where the glass portions or the plastic portions or the rubber portions can come into the contact of the formulations so there are impurities which can be coming out of these packaging materials also very critical so that's where the extractable and leachables comes into the pictures from the packaging materials are the primary packaging materials which is coming into the contact of the formulation which is very critical and also there are impurities during the manufacturing also we are using stainless steel materials also we are using sometimes silicone tubings there are plastic fill pvc pdf filters which is used for the filtration of the formulation during manufacturing and also sometimes we are using the bags uh for the uh, during the manufacturing so these are all the materials also during the short period of time time coming to the contact of the formulation but it can also there are there is a possibility that there is a materials can be leached into the or can be extracted into the formulations so this is where the manufacturing parts as well as the primary packaging materials which are coming into the direct contact with the formulation especially the formulation is in this uh, form of solution or the suspension or the liquid uh, state then there is a interaction or can happen and the extractable and leachables coming to the uh, can be uh, can be present in the formulation and can be uh, detrimental for the finished formulation during the storage so this is what we are going to see in the upcoming slides so hope you you people have understood where from the extractable leachables are coming so there are three different uh, important parts of the formulation api excipients and the primary packaging systems and in that api and excipients can create impurities for the formulation and also the primary packaging materials the the extractable leachables are, leachables are associated with the packaging materials and the manufacturing parts of the finished product so this is what the introduction about to the uh, extractable leachables in the next slide we are seeing some of the examples of the leachable harmful leachables which is found in the history of the pharmaceutical development there were several incidents in which potentially harmful leachables were identified in certain products first is the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons ph a large group of organic compounds formed during incomplete combustion of the organic materials so the poly, poly aromatic hydrocarbons are group of organic compounds they are formed during the combustion of organic materials so this combustion of organic materials happens during the manufacturing or the development of the active active pharmaceutical ingredient especially and then during 1990s the us fda became aware of reports concerning this polyaromatic hydrocarbon contamination within chlorofluorocarbon cfc filled meter dose inhalers so when this meter dose inhalers which is used for the uh, nasal or the, uh, oral sprays this meter dose inhalers has the uh, aerosol kind of formulations where the propellants are used as the chlorofluorocarbon this fluorofluorocarbon can react to the plastic materials present in the packaging system uh, then it can form the compounds these polyaromatic hydrocarbons so these polyaromatic hydrocarbons can present in the finally present in the formulation because of this interaction can be detrimental for the toxicity of the product it can be mutagenic also so this is one of the example where this uh, leachables are coming into the picture so another case study about historically you see that there is a diethyl hexyl phthalate dhp is used 
around the world as a plasticizer in a range of pvc products there are we are using lot of pvc products in the primary packaging materials lot of caps are prepared from pvc and there are bags which is prepared from pvc so there are several materials which is used uh, uh, the material of construction is based on the pvc for the packaging materials so that that dye ethyl hexyl phthalate is the ex plasticizer used in the manufacturing of the pvc of intravenous tubings bags and catheters so this dhp has been found in total parental nutrition of fat emulsions this uh, tp and total parental nutrition fat emulsions are filled in the bags so this bags contains this dhp so this infants are known to be particularly sensitive to dhp triggered toxicity so when these bags are used for the nutrition of the infants after the birth there is a possibility that it can create the toxicity so based on this risk in 2002 the fda released a notification suggesting that alternatives to dhp containing devices must be used in male neonates pregnant women who are carrying male fetuses so they uh, there have been a recommendation that you have to use materials which is free of dhp so these are the classical examples where this the concept of extractor leachables evolved during this particular uh, period so now we have come to the main chapter what the extractables and leachables so here the picture shows about uh, the one is the packaging system that is the meter dose inhaler and another one is the formulation is coming out of the packaging systems so the what is so when it comes to the impurities which is coming out of the primary packaging materials when it comes to the formulation we call it as leachables because these materials are leaching from the formulation leaching from the packaging material into the formulations so these are this can be organic compounds or elemental impurities whatever it may be so when there is a leachables in the finished formulation the source of leachables is the primary packaging materials so so then what is the terminology extractables extractables are defined as compounds that migrate from any product contact material when exposed to an appropriate solvent under exaggerated conditions of time and temperature so the definition says it is when the exaggerated conditions of the time and temperature are in appropriate solvent so what we are seeing that first we have seen the leachables which is actually present in the finished formulation but to understand the leachables we need to profile the extractables so what we do we take the for example in this picture we have seen the primary packaging materials of the meter dose inhaler so we take the, all these materials and put under exaggerated conditions put it into the solvent and put it into exaggerated condition and see that what are the compounds coming under uh, uh, exaggerated conditions so we characterize this compound and profile these compounds so this is artificially we are doing intentionally we are doing to create the profile of extractables then once the profile of extractables are created for the formulation for the pr primary packaging materials this profile will be compared with the leachables found in the finished formulation then there can be a correlation for example one compound butyl hydroxytoluene we found in the finished product once after the product is manufactured and the storage of 6 months or 8 months we analyze the formulation and found that there is a butyl hydroxytoluene as a leachable in the product <coughs> excuse me so when if the butyl hydroxy where from this butyl hydroxytoluene comes so this butyl so to make that correlation you intentionally do expose this uh, primary packaging materials under exaggerated condition and make it a profile in case in that profile the butyl hydroxytoluene is there then you can confirm that that butyl hydroxytoluene is leached from the packaging material into the formulation so extractables or we are intentionally creating a profile for the packaging material whether it is a rubber stopper whether it is a glass bottle whether it is a hdpe bottle whether it is a polyvinyl pvp cap or anything else to that extent you are making uh, making that material undergoing a exaggerated condition and make the profiling of the extractables 
So while leachables are the subset of the extractables that are found in the interaction between the product and the contact material under standard operating conditions. What is standard operating conditions are nothing but once the product is coming into the market and it is being you have the expiry date of two years the, the, the formulation will be there in the inside the primary packaging material for two years. So during the two years from the packaging material, the compounds may leach into the product. So this is what the standard operating condition. So the leachables are the subset of extractable are found in the interaction between the product and the contact material. So this is the difference between extractable and leachables. So this is uh, the slide is talking about the risk of the different products, the risk associated with the different products. So the risk can be assessed based on the two factors. One is the degree of concern associated with the route of administration. So whether it is a topical, or a oral or injectable or nasal. So that route of administration, the degree of concern associated with the route of administration, that is one point. Another point is the likelihood of packaging component and dosage form interaction. So what could be the dosage form and packaging component interaction? So if it is, a, for example, if it is a tablet or a powder, the interaction is less because it is in solid state. Solid state with a solid state is the interaction is very less. But if it is a liquid, then the possibility of interaction is more. So that is how the, the degree of uh, the risk is uh, risk is the, then designed according to the these two factors. That is the degree of concern associated with the route of admission and then the likelihood of package component dosage from interaction. Accordingly, the highest risk is coming into the inhalation products like the uh, inhalation aerosols, injectables and injectable suspensions. Then medium risk is coming to the sterile powder, sterile powder for injection where it will be reconstituted and stored for some time. Then another high risk products are ophthalmic solution suspension, transdermal ointments and other things. Then the lowest risk is topical solutions, topical powders, oral tablets, capsules and everything. So this is defined by the US FDA in chapter, USP chapter 1663 and 664. So the current regulations, what is, uh, what is the status of current regulations with respect to the extractable and leachables? in case if you are uh, looking at the uh, development in the recent years. So recently the ICH Q, Q3D and Q3E is talking about the assessment of control of extractable eligibles for pharmaceuticals and biologics. This is internationally. At, uh, the ICH has represented the extractable eligibles in the for the pharmaceutical and biologics and also the United States Pharmacopoeia chapter 1663 and 664 also talking about extractables and leachables. And ICH Q3E talks about detail about the extractable leachables, which is dated 30th June 2020. A yeah, manufacturing and the packaging system into a solvent under forced conditions, which is talks about the extractables and also the worst case scenario and the risk of the container closer systems, drug delivery device components, etc. So these are all the important advanced systems, which is uh, advanced to market, which is talk, ICH and the USFDA talks about the extractable and leachables of late. So the international stand about the extractable leachables are migration of mobile chemical species from components used in the manufacture and storage of pharmaceutical products must be assessed. So this is the international stand. According to this international stand, many uh, companies are evaluating the extractable leachables associated with the packaging systems for the pharmaceutical products. And especially for the, the products which is developed and manufactured for the Europe, USA and Canada. But in India, as per the Indian Pharmacopoeia, 
for parental visual inspection clarity transparency leakage test pyrogen testing extractable metals are sufficient so there is no leachable testing is or extractable testing is required in india for any product which is marketed that to injectables large volume parental whatever it is except the vaccines for which indian regulatory asked for the extractable and leachable profiles so what are the sources of this leachable species there are multiple sources there are this there are the common examples are primary packaging external components like vials caps rubber stoppers lids foils which is associated with the lids so this can there are, there can be a single use systems like syringes and intravenous bags and there are other materials like internal components gaskets o rings walls springs actuators etc components of actuators or can be the source of the leachable species and there can there is a possibility that the secondary and tertiary packaging like labels and adhesives inks and colors also can be leached into the product for example if you take the ophthalmic product it is having the label with the colors the ink and the adhesive portion of the labels can be leached into the product that also can be assessed so then now it comes to the safety concern threshold and analysis, analytical evaluation threshold so we are talking about the impurities and the extractable leachables how will you estimate or how will you analyze these compounds so you do the extractables profiling of a particular for example a rubber stopper you keep the rubber stopper under exaggerated conditions put it in your solvent and see that what kind of compounds coming out so this will be this should be analyzed by a analytical method so for that analytical method you should have a limit of quantification or identification so to how will you arrive due to this limit of quantification so for this there are two parameters which is used for one is the safety concern threshold and the analytical evaluation threshold the safety concern threshold is the total daily intake threshold below which a leachable presents negligible safety concerns from mutagenic and non mutagenic toxic effects so there will be allowable limit so that should be defined so then there is a analytical evaluation threshold which is the concentration above which extractable and leachable need to be identified and quantified so this analytical evaluation threshold can be limit of quantification for the analytical method for the assessment of extractable leachables so to arrive to the analytical evaluation threshold you need to have this safety concern threshold so let us see an example before going to the example we can see the how this safety concern threshold with respect to the different dosage form arrived so there are two factors impact the safety concern threshold again the route of administration then the degree of product packaging concern contact so according to the product quality research institute pqri which is uh, the consortium of uh, european as well as the us scientists they have given the safety concern threshold of 0.15 microgram per day for the toxicological and safety perspective so the allowable limit per day for any kind of leachable impurities 0.15 microgram per day for the uh, for the nasal and uh, oral aerosols aerosol products that is the highest risk product then when it comes to injectable it is 10 times more than that that could be 1.5 microgram per day that is the safety concern threshold now recently when we interacted with the usfda while submitting our studies uh extractable and leachable studies usfda recommended 5 microgram per day for the oral suspension and solutions as well as the powder for injections that are for that also the safety concerns threshold should be used as 5 microgram per day so the five the safety concern threshold is depends on the route of administration and the degree of product packaging concern the lowest safety concern threshold is for the highest risk product that is the aerosols inhalation aerosols etc then it comes to the lowest is the uh, risk is the oral solution and suspension for which 5 microgram per day so how this safety concern threshold is used for the calculation of analytical evaluation threshold so the analytical evaluation threshold is calculated by the safety concern threshold multiplied with 
dose per container divided by dose per day. This is the formula. So accordingly, here is the example. The dose per day is 25. Uh, 25 dose per container, 25 doses and the per dose per day is 0.548 microgram with the safety concern threshold of 0.15 microgram per day will give you the analytical evaluation threshold of 0.274 microgram per ml. So this 274 PPB is the your analytical evaluation, calculated analytical evaluation threshold and your analytical method limit of quantification should be equal to this analytical evaluation threshold of 274 PPB or it should be less. So your method able to detect for this particular product the impurity level either 274 the limit of 274 PPB or less than that. Your method should detect up to this level. So this this is the important calcula calculation and the parameter which it should be which will be required for the analytical method development for the extractable and leachables. So here you can see there are extractable samples and leachable samples. It will be analyzed. So there are different type of compounds which can be analyzed out of these samples. There are non volatile leachables, volatile and semi volatile leachables and there will be elemental and inorganic leachables. So generally these non volatile leachables are analyzed by liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry LCMS where it is it won't evaporate and gas chromatography cannot be used and there is volatile and semi volatile it can be used. volatile can be done by a GCMS gas chromatographic technique but with the headspace auto sampler. What is headspace auto sampler where the sample will be directly taken in the vial and it will be at certain temperature the compounds will be evaporated and by gas chromatography technique it will be separated then it will be detected by MOS or FID detector whatever detector you are using. So volatile can be used can be analyzed by headspace gas chromatography then semi volatile can be done by GCMS finally elemental can be done by the ICPMS method. So these are group of compounds must be evaluated for the extractables as well as the leachable samples. So extractables are done under exaggerated conditions on the packaging materials. Leachables are done for the finished product and then then if the compounds are found then it will be correlated. So the type of container closer system dosage forms so far we handled in our company or uh, there are several oral solution suspensions. The container closer type is bottle caps, liners, droppers, oral syringes, foil lids, etc. Then small volume parenteral, glass vials, rubber stopper, pre-filled syringes, barrel, plungers, needle, etc. Large volume parenteral, bags, films, spikes, ports, medication ports, foils, tubes, etc. Nasal spray and topical spray, pumps, actuators, glass bottles, canisters, nozzles, ophthalmics, nozzle caps, bottles, topicals, tubes, caps, aluminum tubes, liners, etc. So these are the different kind of packaging materials and were used for different kind of dosage forms we evaluated for the extractable profiling. And apart from that, we have evaluated extractable profiling for the manufacturing parts like filters, gaskets, connectors, silicone tubing, etc. Then it comes to the leachables, the finished products comprises from oral solution suspension, small volume parenteral, large volume parenteral, ophthalmics, topical products, nasal sprays, inhaler samples, etc. So generally these products are aged products which are stability products, one year old or one and a half year old after the manufacturing we evaluate for the presence of leachable after sufficient time of interaction between the formulation and the packaging materials. So these are the analytical methods which is used for different kind of set of compounds with the LOQ and LOD established in our facility. So GC headspace with the FID for the volatile organic compounds with the LOQ of 10 PPP like that GCMS, ICPMS, LCMS for non-volatile organic compounds, ion chromatography for the ions. We developed a method with the LOQ of different uh, PPB levels. So this will be tweaked according to the formulation. If required, we can go for the lower level. The lower level is critical for the product. So these are the some of the standards used for these methods. There are VOC mix, 
there are epa uh, semi volatile calibration mix which contains lot of uh, semi volatile organic compounds so which for which we developed the method then there are in elemental impurity standards which is used for the icpms and there is a non volatile organic compound mix generally uh, for the these standards are being obtained from the sigma or some other standard suppliers so what is the use of this extractable leachable assessments so we establish the worst case potential leachable profile in a manner which facilitates the safety evaluation and qualification of the probable leachables and then facilitate the assessment assessment of patient exposure to chemical entities resulting from the packaging materials then facilitate the establishment of qualitative and quantitative leachables extractable correlations so these are the things important use of this extractable leachable these are part of product development and now it is essential for the uh, advanced markets like us europe canada so once we establish this profiling if anything we found in the aged products any compound which is above the safety concern threshold then we need to do the risk assessment toxicological assessment whether it is mutagenic or not whether it is safe or not all those assessments we need to do so what is the status in india the advanced regulated markets as i said it is essential also it requires risk and toxicology assessment for the monitoring of leachable compounds if it is found in the aged formulation but in india it is not as of now indian regulatory do not require such data for marketing of the finished products so at this juncture it is important to understand the risk associated with the extractable and leachable potential of indian pharmaceutical products so this is a sample slide which is talking about the us united states pharmacopeia chapter 1663 talks about the different extracting media used for different kind of packaging component like small volume parenteral large volume parenteral what kind of solvents you use when you do intentionally assess the extractable profile of yeah, any kind of packaging material used for the small volume parenteral or large volume parenteral like rubber stopper so rubber stopper i take and I do the extraction with water ph 5.2 water ph 9.5 and then isopropanol water 50 50 at exaggerated conditions that means for example 40 degree for 5 days 60 degree for 5 days i'll incubate or reflux there are different types of extraction methods are used so this is the slides yet giving a typical flow of how i will evaluate a injectable formulation parenteral drug formulation so first i will develop analytical method to assess the volatile organic compounds semi volatile organic compounds non volatile organic compounds and elements then i do the extractable study for the packaging materials that is flip of animal aluminum crimping then the rubber stopper then the glass vial so i created the extractable profile then i do using the same method i do the leachable screening study for the finished product which is the aged product stability product which is one year or two year old so then you see the extractables for example i will simulate this is the vial which is containing the solvent which i told you so the i will make the solvent and see see whether there are how many how much what are the compounds there in the uh, i just take the vial and the rubber stopper put the solvent put it in the exaggerate condition and evaluate the compounds on the other hand in the leachables the finished product inside i will see the i will analyze and see the compounds then so i will do a correlation of this extractable and leachable for example any compound i found in the leachable uh, ST, uh, reachable leachable analysis then i whether it is there in the extractable profile or not i will check then whether it is coming from the rubber stopper or vial i will see what is the source then i will do the once i do the correlation then i do the risk assessment if required toxicological assessment for the leachables then submit to the regulatory as a justification or if it is really risk then we have to withdraw the product so this is the typical way of doing a extractable leachable for the parenteral products so that's where we are coming to this uh, presentation so we have seen the source of extractable and leachables why it is important and what what kind of steps we need to do for the extra uh, assessment of extractable leachable 
what is the significance of extractable leachables in the pharmaceutical development and how we a typical extractable leachable study are conducted with this i am concluding this presentation these are some of the references which is very critical uh, to understand this further especially the united states pharmacopeia 1663 and 664 there are pqra guidelines so you can go through these uh, references and understand more about this now i am open for questions if anything from the audience thank you dr prabhakar please wait uh, for a few questions yeah yeah sir hello sir yeah yeah please go ahead i have a question why the cough syrups are mostly stored in plastic containers sir yeah i see plastic containers are one of the cheapest uh, or the uh, uh, what do you call the packaging see you have to see this uh, these plastic containers are widely used in the pharmaceutical development it is not that you should not use the plastic containers you can use the plastic containers but how the quality what is the quality of the plastic containers what is the how it is being manufactured whether the supplier of the plastic containers whether they are following any standards during the manufacturing any compliance so all these things need to be checked so when we develop products for the regulated markets these qualities of the uh, quality of the packaging materials are being used be, be, are being evaluated by the uh, pharmaceutical companies then only the packaging materials are chosen for the pharmaceutical development it is not like that you should not use plastic and you, know, you can use but the risk associated with the uh, plastic containers need to be definitely evaluated and it should be uh, documented okay sir thank you sir one more question sir why yeah. the perfumes are mostly stored in tin containers sir why not plastic containers which which product madam like perfumes perfumes sir perfumes <laughs> see this yeah that's where see, uh, generally the preferred containers uh, for the perfumes and the uh, aerosols were the propellants propellants are very organic in nature so the organic when the propellants are organic very organic medium as are used more organic mediums are used in the any kind of formulation whether it is a cosmetics or the pharmaceutical you should not use plastic because the plastics are more interactive and it can react with the propellant and it creates many toxic compounds that's where you are using either metal metal based material or a glass based material for the perfumes as well as the aerosols thank you sir anyone have any questions second wala thank you sir thank you so uh, i just uh, inform you that uh, we have started one more platform called uh, knowyourindustry.in www.knowyourindustry.in where you can uh, understand the industry perspectives of different uh, uh, areas like uh, pharmaceutical development clinical research pharmacovigilance etc so you can go through this website to understand more about the orient industry orientation about the uh, so we are providing certification courses for the industry orientation so you can understand if you are looking for a career in industry you can if you want to familiar with the industry perspectives of each and every area scope and opportunities you can visit and understand thank you so much for your time and th i thank uh, the principal of viper as well as uh, dr dinesh mohan for providing this opportunity to interact with you thank you thank you prabhakar yeah thanks for your uh, nice lecture yeah uh, i'll talk to you later okay okay I'll thank you i am leaving you. right now from the screen thank you so much thank you thank you yeah mm. to take
Thank you, students. Uh, one more lecture is there. Two thirty. I am giving you half an hour rest. Ah? Uh, rest to Kavala Vuddha. I'm, that is the reason I am giving you half an hour. Thanks for your patience. Uh, don't feel bored, okay? Sir, edo compulsion la undadu. If you really, if you want to attend, please stay back. Right? So, uh, we'll be back on 2.30 sharp. Okay?